Hello everyone and welcome to our Monday night cook along. So I'm Jolly Carla and tonight we are making black forest macarons. Um, so this is a recipe from my website. Um, I've just printed out the website of the recipe so you can see what we're making here. So those are our macarons, the finished um, product. Um, I know a lot of people are a little bit scared of macarons and I do understand that, but the Thermomix does all the hard work. So um, we are going to make those today and hopefully we'll have a few people uh, making them along with me. Okay, so Brett's just put the link up for the macarons. Hi Kerry, how are you today? Are you making them with me today, Kerry? It's lovely to see you on. Um, uh, Kerry is starting um, her consultancy business. She's in Carry On and um, she's going to become our latest um, Thermomix consultant for the area. Hi Shirley, hi Elizabeth, how are you? Lovely to see you on. Um, yes, so Kerry's got um, a new Facebook page that probably I needs that. a little <laughs> bit of love because it's brand new. Um, so she is um, Kerry. Um, Kenwood, I'll get Brett to look for it, it's Kerry Kenwood Thermomix Consultant and he'll put the link up, um, but it would be lovely if you could just send her some likes and some love. Hi Faye, how are you? And Faye's making them with me today, wonderful. Oh, I'm sure she said that. No, 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 no. Oh, did we? Oh, I'm not. I'm not, Faye. Hi Susan. And hi Lorraine. Oh, you had me excited, Faye. I thought I had one going for it with me. Um, and Elizabeth says good evening to both of us, Brett. So that's lovely. Okay, um, so the macarons. The first step is actually making sure that our Thermomix is completely um, clean. So um, we can do this two ways. Um, we can either get it straight out of a clean um, hot wash cycle out of the dishwasher um, or we can do a vinegar wash. Now I've got Brett, Brett, can you pop the link for the vinegar wash? She did put it down earlier so that if anyone was cooking with me, they could do the vinegar wash ahead of time. Um, and, but um, I've, I, I have done the vinegar wash earlier when I made these um, macarons, but um, then once I had finished making the macarons, I put my Thermomix bowl in the dishwasher and um, this is the bowl straight out of the dishwasher. Hi Sharon, how are you? Lovely to see you. Oh Sharon, I haven't um, seen your name appear for ages. You're one of my first customers. Lovely to see you on here. Hi Sue, how are you? Yes, um, lovely to see you also. And Diane. Okay, so Thermomix Black Forest Macarons. The, so everybody knows we've done our vinegar wash. Did you read, did you see Sue's comment? No, I didn't. No, it's really lovely. My relaxation watching you before I cook dinner. Oh, Sue, that's just lovely. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, my relaxation for the whole week is actually doing this. This is my happy place. This actually gives me, gets me hyped and happy for the rest of the week. Okay, so I'm going to do this in manual mode. So I'm selecting the home button and we get our three um, circles up. And I'm going to go straight to here. We have lined two baking trays with paper. So there we are. And um, now we um, need to place the icing sugar into the Thermomix bowl. So we do need to make sure our bowl is completely dry from our vinegar wash. Now the reason we're putting this one in is because pure icing sugar, and this is pure icing sugar, goes all clumpy. And if we put it in our macarons, we're going to get lumps in our macarons. So we're going to, oops, make a big mess with our icing sugar. Thanks you love. Look, see, this is what not to do. I'm just showing you all how not to go about cooking. So we're going to pop that lid on, clear the screen a bit so we can see the circles again. And we are, um, putting on five seconds speed nine. So we're just milling that icing sugar and getting out all of the lumps. Okay, 
So icing sugar is only pure sugar, whereas icing sugar mix that you get actually has um, sugar and corn flour in it, and we can't use that to make back products. So um, it's just the clumpy stuff that we can use, so we do have to do this step first. Now, I am going to try and get... What have we got there? Wendy's books arrived. Oh, Wendy. Really Lovely. I'm so pleased that you've got your books. That's awesome. Thank you so much for supporting me and purchasing as well. I really appreciate um, I really appreciate that. And um, um, Wendy also made the scones. Oh. So they were delicious on morning tea during a very busy morning of total work on the farm. Oh, that's fabulous. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, I... Um, I, the scones, I'm really pleased with those scones, so it's the recipe, it's not me. Um, it's, um, if, I think you've probably made Gemma's fluffy scones, and that's her dad's recipe um, that um, she passed on to me, and yeah, it's, it's a winner. I don't think there's any uh, recipe better. Okay, so I'm trying to get most of the icing sugar off. Now, icing sugar doesn't have fat in it. So it's not going to hurt our eggs. I am trying to get most of it off, though, because icing sugar does um, cook the egg white. Um, and we don't, we do want it to cook later, but we don't really want to start that process too much um, ahead of time. So I've got most of it out. It's not perfect. It doesn't really need to be out um, all that. So I've missed a couple of... Uh, it was Jude. Uh, Jude from um, the island. Oh, hi Jude, how are you? Lovely to see you. Okay, so we haven't really started, we've just kind of prepped. So we've got our icing sugar all nice um, now, not longy. Now I've got three egg whites here. So, um, oh hi Michelle from Adelaide, lovely to see you. So we've got our three egg whites. Now these have been out at room temperature. If when you're cracking your egg whites you get any yolk into um, in the um, egg white at all, you do have to get rid of all of the egg white and start again. Um, any egg yolk whatsoever um, will stop the egg white from um, fluffing up properly. So we're popping the egg white in and the lid on and then oh, we're adding our cream of tartar. So we've just got a quarter of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. So what that does, it helps the egg white um, structure and just makes it more stable. Okay, beat two minutes, 37 degrees, speed three. God, I think it's more than 37 degrees in here. Oh, it's so hot. <laughs> and I've got the aircon on. When I made the first batch of, um, should I put the, <laughs> the um, huh, and I've noticed uh, insert butterfly. I didn't do that. So everybody, that was almost my first mistake. Whenever you're beating egg whites, you absolutely need your um, butterfly in. So now we are going to speed through. So we've got it on two minutes, 37 degrees, and um, speed through. Oh, hi, Vicky, how are you? Are you cooking, Vicky? This one's a challenging one. Um, it, it's challenging um, in thought, like, but not in actual, um, not in actual um, doings. You'll see it when I make this, just how easy it is. And you'll, you won't think I'm clever anymore. You'll just think that this is a simple, just simple thing to do with the thermomix. Except that I, oh, wow. yep. Um, yeah, so Michelle's caravaning <laughs> oh, lovely. in Coffin Bay on the peninsula in South Oz. Oh, lovely. For 10 days. For 10 days. Oh, oh that's so good. good. Yep. And Vicky says she's not cooking tonight. She doesn't really have a sweet tooth. Oh, I wish I could say that. We had high tea on the weekend and um, I made sure I had space for my desserts. 
evening to everyone. I just missed that. Just watching tonight. I think that was Nolene. That was Nolene. Oh, hi, Nolene. Um, hi. Vicky. Vicky Conklin, yeah, Vicky. Yeah. She's yeah. not cooking tonight. Um, lovely. Okay, so 36 seconds to go on that. And this is the first step in our macarons. Just getting those eggs, um, egg whites nice and fluffy. Can I know to, Dave just wants to know, which is Wendy, I think, wants to know how to do something, and I just missed Sorry. it. Uh, oh, oh. Dave, 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 Oh, Vicky said she made easy satay last night and she's had, is she having it again tonight? Is that what she's saying? Yeah, yes. Okay. So she made the easy chicken satay last night and had it again tonight. Now it's making a liar out of me. I didn't know that come off. Got it. Yeah. And mine's filthy dirty, so please don't look. <laughs> that's probably why mine didn't want to come off. Okay. Yeah, so yes, that's how it does. I might actually have to do a cleaning video now that mine actually needs cleaning. <laughs> okay, um, it's the last one I did only um, did a few things. So I'm just going to show you this now. So this is the first step of our egg whites. So that's how they're looking at the moment. It's just literally egg white. And now we're adding our caster sugar. So we've got 65 grams of caster sugar going in. Uh, Jude says we forced this recipe in. Oh, this one's off my website, and Brett's put the link up for you. Okay. Yep. So 65 grams of caster sugar. I've got this measured out, and we have two minutes to to um, get it in. Um, so I'm going to put two minutes on the clock. Two minutes, 37 degrees. So the temperature is just to keep it at. A at, a, at like a room temperature type temperature because that's what um, meringue likes. It likes a warm environment. And that is speed three. Okay, so now we need to do it gradually, but we do need to get it all in by about the two minute mark. And if we don't get it all in by the two minute mark, we can actually extend it a little bit longer because we, do, we don't want granules of sugar in there because if we do get that, um, it's going to be gritty meringue. Um, and you see that in pavlova when you see the little dots of sugar through the pad. But um, yeah, we're making macarons today, but it's kind of the same principle. And I am trying to avoid the butterfly a bit, but it's really um, hard to do. Hi, you see Kerry here? Yep. Says hi. Oh, hi, Kerry. Excited to see you tonight. Oh, it's fabulous to see you too. And hello, Sandra. Lovely to see you. I'm making our Black Forest macarons today. We've just got the meringue going. So this is the same as if you were making a pavlova meringue. So it's exactly the same. Start with your vinegar wash, then um, beat your egg whites, then we're adding our caster sugar. Um, so that it's not that the same way, um, and that, then this is where we vary. Now is the change. I've got to clean my Thermomix. That noise that you're hearing is this um, arm. It's getting sticky. I've obviously been doing a lot of sugary things, and it's getting sticky. So that's our meringue. So very nice. If I was making pavlova, I mean this side got three eggs in it. So I was making a three egg pavlova, I'd be very happy with that. So I'm just going to pull this butterfly out.
Now I wish I had, I'm going to get a glass or a plastic bowl that's nice and big. Oh, my sweets tonight is the sweet corn pickle out of your garden. Uh, yeah, no, I like my sweets very sweet. So, yeah, I need to get myself a clear bowl so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. But I'm going to pop the meringue into this bowl. How's everybody's weekend been? Really? Yeah, had a lovely high tea. What did we have? We had scones and chocolate mousse and a lemon gelato palate cleanser, which was delicious. Um, nice savouries and corn fritters. So many lovely things. Um, and that was at the Central Coast, that was at Q Dining, which is, um, yeah, I didn't know, I mean, I don't know the Central Coast very well, but um, yeah, that was really good. Okay, so we've got the next lot of ingredients. So we've got our icing sugar that we, um, that we milled, and we've got our cocoa. So I'm just going to tip the cocoa all over the bench and into the icing sugar. So there we go. And I'm just going to mix that around a bit. So. That'll do. Okay, and now we're going to alternate. So I've got the, um, I'm going to pop in half the icing sugar and cocoa mix. That's about half. And just kind of fold that around. Now I'm not being rough with it, but I'm not being too gentle. I am folding it, but it, I'm not keep, I'm not worrying too much about it. Does that make any sense? I'm not sure if it does. Um, uh, I've got the things down. Did you see Diane's message? I haven't. Oh, you did? I haven't seen any oh, messages. Sorry. Yep, so do you um, want to help me out? Can, uh, can I exchange to other fruit also? Yes. So this is just um, an idea. It was just something that came to me. Um, so, yes, you can absolutely change the fruit. You could put some... Um, some raspberries in there. That would be delicious, fresh raspberries. Okay, now I'm going to add half the um, almond. This is almond milk. And stir that around. Yeah, so um, I've made just so many different macarons. And um, you can mix up like the filling to your own taste. And... You know, some of my macarons have got um, a ganache in the middle, some have got cream, um, some are German cream, some, you know, it's it's just up to you how you want to fill them. Um, the ganache is the way the shops do it, it's a bit more um, stable in, the, in that the cream um, absorbs into the macaron quicker, and so that kind of makes the macaron go soggy quicker. So you definitely want to be eating the macaron as soon as you stuff it. So if you were taking it somewhere, you would take the macaron um, with the, um, the macaron. I'll show you. What you would do is you would take your macarons in an airtight um, container and you would take your filling um, in um, a parking bag or something ready to fill when you got there. You wouldn't fill them ahead of time because it would just be, the moisture would be going into the macaron the whole time. And by the time you got there, it might not be as nice.
I'll make sure you read out any comments or any questions. Uh, was used to shine. Uh, uh, Veronica Fountains. Yep. Uh, a bit late to the party, but obviously it was just at the interesting stage. <laughs> yep, we are stirring up the um, Macron um, batter, I suppose you would call it, at the moment. Now, I do this by hand and not in the thermomix because I don't want to beat out all of the um, air that we've got into it. Um, so I know you're probably wondering why. We can get the, um, we get it to a really nice um, egg mixture stage the, um, with the meringue and everything, but when it comes to doing this, um, I think it's better to do it by hand. Okay, so that's the last of our almond going in. And Nolene, yep. um, Nolene said that she made the teriyaki chicken on the weekend. Oh, lovely. So quick and delicious. Oh, Nolene, I'm so pleased um, you enjoyed it. I'm surprised you haven't made it before, actually, but I'm really pleased that you enjoyed the recipe. It is one of those quick and easy ones, and if you want to add some veggies, you just add them to the Veroma on top, and, um, yeah, you got veggies done at the same time. Which is, yeah, we probably haven't done it for a while. I'm saying we haven't made it for, for a long time. What about that? What if we do that as our next cook along? Yeah, good stuff. Because we were just talking about um, what to do next um, prior to coming on. Uh, Wendy's already said yes. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. Teriyaki chicken, it is then. Um, great. That, that sounds good like stuff, a good Thank, Thank you, Nolene. <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, next Monday, um, we won't be on because I'm surprising hubby with um, a, an anniversary, a 20 year anniversary slash um, Valentine's Day um, getaway that he has no idea where we're going um, and what we're doing. Uh, so, but then the week after that, we will do the um, We'll do the teriyaki chicken and I'll throw some veggies in as well. Oh, you'd like to do uh, lamb shakes. And Nolene said she uh, said made it again. She's made it before. Oh, you have. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure you would have yeah. made it. Yeah. Yeah. We, so we'll do that one, um, not next Monday, but the Monday after. Okay. So now we're going to put this into a parking bag. I do you know I'm not usually very good at keeping secrets, am I, Greg? No, I've got absolutely no idea. Yeah, I'm usually the worst, and I have kept this secret You've done really well. for quite a while. Mm. Yeah, this has been I think this has been organised since about October last year. So this is. Long term secret. Yeah, yeah. yeah good. you don't know what it is yet. It might be um, trash. Oh. <laughs> it might be something I want and you don't. Yes, that's true. Okay. Um, Duke says. She yeah. noticed in one of your books, being Asian, yeah. the one on soup. Oh, yeah. Didn't we, um, did we do that a month or so ago, where we also did the... Yeah, we did, because we did some of them as dumplings and some of them as wontons. Yeah, for gluten-free. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did. I'll find that. You... Find that and send to the link to that one. Yeah. yeah, we'll do that one again in winter, I think, because that's a really... Good one to have. Okay. I'm just going to pop that away and wash my hands. Don't fall over, don't fall over. Give me two seconds. Okay, so I've got these macarons. No, we're not up to that yet. I'm still piping macarons. So I've got this in a bag, 
got our piping tip on and I'm just going to go down to about a centimetre away from the baking tray I'm going to try and get a circle. I can't see that too well. Yep, I will move. Once you do that first layer, Now they spread a little bit, not very much. The only way they spread is just in the um, standing time. They might spread out a little. They don't spread in the cooking time. Wow, that one was weird. <sighs> So when you're piping, um, remember that we want an even number because we've got to sandwich them together. So I think I'm probably going to get two more. And you're always thinking too that you're looking at the size of your last one and trying to get them it's pair the same size. Doesn't matter, you, like if you're anything like me, you might struggle to get them all the same size, but if you can at least get your pairs the same, then um, you're on a, you're, you're halfway there. Okay, I'll need that piece of later, but I'll get that off it later. Okay, so the next thing we're doing is we're dropping. Oh, jeez. Okay, and that's to um, get the air bubbles out and to get it kind of settled. Nice. These ones are going to be much prettier than my other ones. My other ones are a bit ugly. Okay. So that's also settled down um, some of my piping as well. So my piping wasn't that pretty. Um, and by just doing that as well, it's actually smoothed over a lot of the things. Like you can still see some nipply bits, like some little boys. <laughs> what else can you call them? They look like little nipples up on the top of the um, macron. But um, so I'm going to put these out, um, out of the way. We've got to leave these now to um, to get a skin. I just put my finger in that one. Okay, so we're going to leave these to get a skin before we put them in the oven. So we're not even going to preheat the oven yet. So how long does it have to get the skin? Okay, Fred's just asked how long will it take to get the skin. And I think I've said in the recipe um, 20 minutes, but um, I waited 20 minutes um, while I was doing the first slot and 20 minutes didn't do it. Um, I, um, I ended up waiting closer to an hour to get the skin. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then they worked, it worked out really well. So basically you can tell when it's um, when it's ready. Um, damn it, I just got water on the macarons. And what would happen if you cooked it and didn't get a skin? If you cooked it and it didn't have a skin, it look it would probably 
still split. work okay, but um, you might find that it rises unevenly. So what the skin does is um, it means that it just lifts straight. It's more likely to lift straight and get the little feet around the edge and keep this completely smooth. Whereas when um, you don't have a skin, it lift, it lifts, it can lift all over the place. So it's like a cake, it can wobble wherever there is um, any, any pockets of air. Hmm. Yeah. And there was a question from Kerry. Yep, go ahead Kerry. What was the Kerry, <laughs> Kerry question? <laughs> can you use the mixed shop piping bag? Kerry, funny you should ask. That's what we're using, the mix shop piping bag. I use the disposable ones because I'm lazy um, and they're cheap and I find that um, they come in a massive big box like this and I just don't run out. Oh, so, oh yeah, there's a hundred. So yeah, I really love these. And Kerry said the green one. The green one, yeah, you can use that absolutely. Um, the only reason I don't is, like I said, I'm lazy. Um, you'll get, um, you'll find that um, you'll get uh, oily, it'll get oily and it's hard to clean off. It, and you use three piping bags with this recipe, so you'll be cleaning in between each of the piping bags because right now I'm about to make the, um, the cream filling. Yeah. No, we're not making ganache for this one. Um, there we go. Okay. So this one has got. Um, so the first one I'm going to do is the cream topping, and then because that's just got um, icing sugar, cream, and vanilla, and then we'll do the cream filling. Um, you'll see how this comes up. So I'll use these ones that I made earlier today. Now these ones are little ugly ducklings because I was in a big hurry and I, um, you didn't know they made piping bags. I know, it's so good. And a pack of 100 and they're large ones as well, so it's really good. Um, yeah, these ones are um, kind of ugly ducklings. They haven't been cared for at all. Um, like I've, I've even got water on this tray. Yeah. But anyway, the kids will eat them. I'll go, okay. So where are we up to? Mm. Clean and dry. Add the butterfly. I've got a second butterfly somewhere. Oh, you didn't smash it? Hey? You didn't smash it today? No, I, I did a demo today and I forgot that I had been making this and I started the machine um, on 10 with the butterfly in, but thankfully I hit the off button quickly enough. I heard it. And Brett heard it, <laughs> yep, and yep. But I was good, I showed the lady what not to do with the butterfly. So <laughs> she'll remember that forever, I think. Speed four for the butterfly. Such a good cook, I teach everybody what not to do. Okay, icing sugar. We want two tablespoons of icing sugar. And one teaspoon of vanilla. Now I'm putting the lid on and I'm going to watch this. There's no real set time for beating um, cream because it, every time you make cream, it's going to take a different amount of time. You just have to judge it um, based on the cream. It seems to be the pressure cream does one thing and the more, um, yeah. I hate doing cream. And I really hate doing cream live. <laughs> Terrifying. I'm just waiting to make sweet butter. Okay, I'm just going to put it a little bit longer and try not to kill it. And that's the 
the sweet butter would be nice with the rice and toast. Well, I can do that for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to So this is the cream that goes on top of our decoration. So we've got, we've got a cream filling in the middle that's got the cherries and the liqueur um, in the middle and then to top it where we've got a little frill um, of cream that's a Chantilly cream on top. Oh, that's okay. That was good. Sorry. Um, Wendy yep. just wrote the piping bag set is currently unavailable at the mix shop. Oh. Can I use my tips in the disposal bags? Yes. Oh, disposable bags. Disposable bags. Yes, you can. Um, the tips go in any bags. And when you said also, yep. um, I made the uh, Chantilly cream successfully because I watched uh, and you make the dough. Oh, oh good. I'm so pleased. That's the great thing about these cooler ones. <laughs> I'm really pleased, Wendy. Honestly, it's so nerve-wracking doing things like that live because I am um, just waiting to make, make a mistake. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that there for the moment while we do the second cream. I did the topping cream first because the second one has flavours in it. Okay, so the next cream is 250 of cream. So just adding our 250. Now I've got to try not to go overboard with this one again. And I think we've got four tablespoons of icing sugar for this one. Now, um, the flavour that I've said is a cherry brandy. So traditionally my forest cake is like, I don't know how to say it, it's Kirsch or Kish or Kirsch, but it's a cherry brandy basically. Now, I um, don't drink and we're not cooking out the alcohol. Oh, thank you so much. That's so lovely. Oh, thank you, Vicky, as well. <laughs> and you do get a good laugh. Yeah, I, I'm happy to laugh at myself as well. Um, I, yeah. I just hope that it's um, that you get something out of it anyway, um, even if I do make mistakes. So um, because this is for the teenagers as well and, um, and the um, brandy isn't cooked out of it, um, rather than put alcohol um, in, the, in the filling, we can do a few other things. We could either put some, um, some cherry um, jam or blueberry or berry jam in the, um, oh, thank you in the cream, or we can add some um, grenadine syrup or something along those lines. So I'm just gonna add um, about 30 mils of grenadine grenadine syrup to this. Oh, it's open? It is. All right. And we're still gonna be adding the cherries um, so that's going to give it more of its cherry flavour as well. So, oh, that smells nice. So, uh, sliding back and again, going to the 3.5. Carrie, uh, where do you get the syrup from? The, um, from um, Dan Murphy's um, has the grenadine syrup. It's one. It's a cocktail ingredient. Oh, there we go. It's at me. It's a cocktail ingredient, but um, it doesn't have any alcohol in it. And you can 
um, use it um, in just with lemonade to make um, fire trucks for kids. So, um, it's yeah, basically it's a cordial, but it's like a it's an adult tasting cordial. If that makes any sense. Oh, now we're getting to the nerve wracking part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dr. Dan. He has everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just didn't, I couldn't think of anything that else that we would use the cherry no. um, cherry liqueur for. And it seemed to love to have 700 grams, 700 mils of cherry liqueur for the next time I make this, which I don't know when that'll be. Right when we moved out of Diggers. I know, I gave that to my dad. Oh, we're going to build the. Yeah, well, you had um, the cherry liqueur then from the last time I made my ones. Really? So, I might give that just a little bit more. I'm just going to have a taste as well. Mm. Okay. Good? Yeah, it is good. Um, just deciding whether or not to put a bit more in it or not. like at the moment it's not stirred through 100 percent but i wasn't going to go any further sorry yeah so i've just got it in this little bottle <laughs> i like it in this because it's a nice little squeeze bottle <laughs> wendy says she's on the edge of her seat <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was in a dilemma, like I wanted to stick my head in there, but I was sticking my head in there and then it was spitting at me, so I was splashing my glasses. Oh, no, 20, 20, and then probably just a little tiny squeeze, maybe 23. So not not too much. Um, Otherwise, the cream will be too loose. It's like my team leader, she's crazy. She has no fear when it comes to um, cream. She actually walks away while it's going. And I, I'm hyperventilating. It's not even my house or my cream. And I'll be hyperventilating. And she'll be just walking around the kitchen. Um, and she does it on speed four. And here I am, you know, on speed three and still not coping. Do you know what I just did? Damn it. Talking too much, Julie. Okay, what we have to do is I've drained my cherries. Now the cream and the cherries go together and then it goes in the piping bag. This is going to be a lovely mess now. just 100 grams of drained um, cherries. You get the cherries in the jars in um, Woolworths. There's usually two different choices, so they're, they're always there. Um, and you can, with the leftovers, you can make, uh, I've got a recipe on my website for um, uh, an apple crumble. Mm. So um, with the leftovers, you can get some pie apples and just do apple and cherry crumble. And it's absolutely delicious. So I'll get Brett to put mm. that recipe up for you. Okay, so we're getting there. We're almost there, everybody. 
going to whack the chip, the um, chocolate in the microwave for 30 seconds. And we're going to start putting this together. I think I'm not going to um, pipe the filling because um, I feel like it's going to be harder than I think. Can you just move the grain in and model the line? Uh, yeah. Here's a question. Yes. How long have you been doing the cook along? How long have we been doing Do you know? Um, I feel like it's only been yeah. a year or two, but then I look back at some of them and we were in our old digger's house. And that was before That's cool we bought That's the um, catamaran and did the um, did the sailing. Um, so yeah, well, yeah, at least four years because we've been here five eighteen years. months. Five years. So probably five years, and really not missing a lot of Mondays. So oh, we've right. been doing this a long time, and it's so much fun. Okay, so what I'm going to do, the, what we do with these macarons now, now they're not perfect, they're, you know, when I do take my time a little bit, they do get better, but what we do now is we choose macarons that are basically the same size and we partner them up. Um, now, obviously, I wouldn't partner this one with this one because it's, it's not his mate, you know, but... You will always go around it and you'll find ones that actually partner up quite nicely. Um, Jude, yep. uh, what's the name of your website? Oh, it's Thermo Kitchen. And Brett will put the link there, but he, if you put the link up to... Uh, Jude, um, I don't know if Jude's getting them. Ah, okay, so we've got our chocolate there now to this well because I'm just going to quickly dip some cherries in chocolate. Oh, you don't need to see the cherries. Oh. So I'm just, I've just got a little jar and melted some chocolate. And then popped it down there. I'm not putting the whole cherry in. Now, if you've got your cherries in the fridge, you have to take the cherries out of the fridge um, ahead of time because cherries in the fridge um, have condensation on them. And when you try and do um, the dipping when you've got condensation on your cherries, it just doesn't go well. And this is dark chocolate, not milk chocolate, because I think it, it's nicer. And Rosemary says, who can resist cherries and chocolate? I know. And this is so easy. Mm. It looks really effective. It does. But it's really easy. And whatever chocolate you've got left over, you know, it's in a jar already. So it's not like you've made a big mess um, to clean up either. So there's a lot of little fiddly parts to this recipe, but none of it is hard. And like these cherry dips, you can do that, you know, days ahead, day or so ahead at least. Okay, that's done. So now we've got our little pears matched up. Now I've got some little bumps on mine because I didn't bash these down hard enough. So I'm just going to take that off so it sits flat. Now nobody's going to see that, um, so we'll do do that ahead of. Um, oh, there we go. Now 
maybe parking is easier. Not my best. Let's try again. Cherries, uh, like are they just from the supermarket? Yep. Or maraschino cherries? Morello, um, no, there's a Morello. I'll show you the container in a sec. Where'd you get this from, Belle? Um, just from Woolworths. Oh, right, I'll get the Google as well. So there we go. You did Morello cherries. Yeah. his pair. Oh, I should have knocked that little top thing off. Gary from um, Bahamas. Yeah, the chocolate covered cherries are a big thing in Jamaica, I can tell you. Oh, really? No, I didn't know that. It's quite easy to do, you just saw. Yeah. Gee, I'm not doing it as well as I've done it in the past. Is it because you're fine, not fine? I don't know, or maybe I just haven't got this as stiff as I've done it before. What's that? She doesn't eat Monday to Wednesday. Oh, that's right. I'm <laughs> killing her. Oh, do you know the hardest thing for me is when I'm looking at um, recipes, trying to work out what what I can convert to Thermomix, and I haven't had lunch yet. It kills me. It absolutely kills me. I have to go and have lunch before I can actually um, go any further sometimes. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop doing this in a sec and finish one off so that you can see. Scooter, you picked the wrong day to be away. Oh, no. You went out to dinner and didn't invite us. Wow. Okay, so now we've got our cream for the top.
Whoa, don't go anywhere this time. No, Wendy said it's brand new. She's loving it. Oh, thank you, Wendy. No, it did look good, though. Um, you're a little wonky. Here we go. Um, uh, Laura says, um, hi. Hello, Laura. We're getting there. And Alison, that looked fantastic. Oh, thank you so much, everyone. Ah! Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a bit top heavy. Maybe these cherries are a bit big at the moment. Anyway, I won't put the cherry on the. I might put it on this one because this one's a bit bigger. This set. I want this set by now. Okay, so there we go. Uh, macrons, our Black Forest macrons. Um, so, yeah, making macrons is really simple. Um, it's getting all the little fiddly bits um, done that takes the time, really, and um, the patience. I always find though that um, these sort of things. These little decorative things, they look really fancy, but they're easy to do. I, I'm not very good at piping. I'm not very good at making things precise or anything like that. So my aim is always to cover up all my imprecisions. So, like, you, I get these little dots on these. So I always plan to actually do a little bit of piping or something like that over the top, a little swirl of cream or something. Um, yeah, and just cover it up. Okay. So, everyone, um... That's macrons in the Thermomix, and thank you for sticking with me. I know it's been a long one tonight. Um, yeah, an hour but on the bus. I know, yeah. So thank you so much. I won't see you next week, but we will be making a teriyaki chicken with steamed um, steamed greens um, on the following week. And thank you so much, everybody. Oh, macrons. Yeah. Same. Yeah, yeah it's lovely. Impressive. Lovely to see everybody. Do you want to have a uh, mouth? No, there's a, just a mouthful, so come over. Oh, okay. I think you can get that one in. Oh, oh I want the other. I'm going to get it down on the camera. What do you think? It's very good. Yeah, crunchy on the outside and um, soft in the middle. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, they're very good. Nice. Love it. Mm. Okay. See you later. Oh, people are saying happy anniversary for next week too, honey. Thank you so much. Yeah, 20 years. Yeah. 20 years ago, strong. Mm. Okay. Bye, all. See you later.